All right, so I just got done seeing a Hotel Transylvania transformation, but yeah, that thing. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry I didn't get to this sooner. I had to see Scream last week, uh, but I really wanted to talk about this movie because I actually really do like the Hotel Transylvania films for the most part. So okay, before I talk about this one, quick recap what I think of the other movies. First two, love them. I love the animation. I love the characters. I love the idea. Uh, I think the jokes are very funny. I think it has just as many uh, animation jokes as well as uh, verbal jokes and adult jokes and kid jokes. Uh, I love the animation style of them. I think they're, they're great ideas. They have legit pretty good heart, but really what shines is the creativity and the comedy and the animation. Absolutely love them. Uh, the third one where they go on the cruise, that one I didn't get into as much. I thought that's where I think what a lot of people thought the first film was going to be where it's just kind of corny and it's only playing to the kids and it's bouncy and I really took a big issue that everybody kind of moved the same in there I love in the first two movies everyone had a very unique way of moving and walking and uh, the way they did certain things where everyone just kind of had the same motion in the third film that I but even taking that out of it, uh, I, I thought the jokes didn't land that much. It wasn't awful, but it, it didn't do much for me. Uh, so now we have this fourth one, and uh, it is not as bad as the third one. It's not as good as the first two. Does that mean I recommend it? Yeah, I do think it's actually a good film, but it kind of takes its sweet time getting there. Uh, the... Set up real quick, just for you. You probably seen the trailer, but if you haven't, uh, the setup is that uh, the Hotel Transylvania crew, uh, a lot of them are it, anyone that wasn't a monster is transformed into a monster. Anyone that was a monster is transformed into a human, and they have to go on. They have to set things right. Uh, but the story behind that is that uh, uh, Dracula, who's now played by a different actor, I guess this guy is like from YouTube, he did all these impressions that has like millions and millions of views and he did one of Dracula and he really, really sounded like him. Adam Sandler couldn't return as Dracula in this one and he does a great job. Uh, the only time I could really tell is when he was singing. That's the only time I'm like, well, that's not Adam Sandler. But uh, majority of the time, like, I guess if you played him back to back, I'd be able to tell, but it was not distracting at all. I thought he had the timing down. He had the emotional moments down. The pitch and range was like, as close as you could humanly get, I mean, especially when you think, like, actors who play Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck or Kermit the Frog, like, whenever they switch them out, most of the time, you're like, oh, that's, I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's good enough, but it doesn't sound quite like them. Like, it's distracting, and this was not distracting at all. This guy did a really, really great job, so, with that out of the way, sorry, little scatterbrain, um, the... A character that sort of gets us all started is Johnny, uh, uh, Mavis's uh, uh, husband. And the issue is that Dracula is going to hand over, he's going to retire, he's going to hand over the hotel to Mavis, but Johnny comes with Mavis, so he pulls back a little bit because he doesn't really trust him, and he makes up this issue about there being a monster clause, that you have to be a monster to run it. So that's what gets things going, you know. You can imagine, like, why people are turning to monsters and, and vice versa. Uh, that's one of two issues I took with this movie. I feel like we've done enough with Johnny. My guess is Johnny probably tests well with kids. Uh, they probably like that he's like the partier and he's animated in a fun, goofy way and everything. Uh, and, and, and he's the dummy, he gets everything wrong. So my guess is kids like to see him. So they're like, bring him back, put more focus on him. So the main like arc in the movie is that Dracula and Johnny have to get along, which I feel like we've seen in the first film. Uh, and it was done fine. I, I didn't feel like we need to retread this, especially because some other characters uh, come back from the previous film. Like you have... Uh, uh, the daughter of Van Helsing, is it Erica? I think, I forget her name. Uh, Van Helsing is there, uh, as well, the, the, the grandfather. Um, and, you know, her and, uh, Dracula are still an item. I thought maybe growing that would have been more interesting. Uh, you can still do something with them transforming into monsters and transforming into humans, because that's a great idea. I mean, I, you want to see what the monsters are like as human. You want to see what the humans will be like as monsters. Uh, so that's a great idea. Love that idea. Um, I just feel like what gets the ball going 
could have been stronger, could have been more unique. It's actually not done, like, that bad in this. Uh, but I feel like there could have been a, a stronger focus that hasn't been tapped on. Yeah, you know, you got, like, the uh, Mavis's kid and, like, this little werewolf girl, and they have, like, a friendship. I thought, like, oh, man, if they, like, get older, wouldn't that be kind of, like, a fun thing to see? Would, would they, like, stay friends? Is there, like, a romance <laughs> with that between, like, a boy and a werewolf? Like, that'd be strange. You know, but we already have one, like, between a, a boy and a vampire so like I don't know there's other things you can do with this that I feel like they kind of didn't take advantage of but the main focus is that you want to see the comedy you want to see the characters and you want to see this fun idea explored where everyone's you know the reverse of what they are monsters are humans and humans are monsters and they do that and they have a lot of fun with it the other issue that made me think at first oh no i'm not gonna like this movie but but they get better at it the animation starting out i say for maybe the first uh 15 20 minutes the animation is supposed to be exaggerated it's always been exaggerated but man they dial it up to like 80 uh in the first two films you would see someone react to like i don't know like is someone throwing like a boulder at them or a table at them or something like that and they go wow i move this way and maybe somebody would throw other things at them and they just keep moving this way or when they would get angry like really really angry you know they wouldn't just yell like this they would yell and change their position a lot like this how could you do that the angrier they were the more exaggerated they would be they had the animation for everything in the first 20 minutes and it is hugely distracting and it's hard to get into the emotions of the scenes which granted it's setting it up so i mean there's not a ton of heavy emotions but there are some and that's the setup of the movie that's what's supposed to hook you in and have you be on board and when everybody is moving that exaggerated it is really really distracting uh, but the two good things that, that come from that, one is they do move uniquely. They, st you know, Dracula will still move like Dracula. Johnny will still move like Johnny. Mavis will still move like Mavis. They will all move the way they were originally designed to move. And that's really nice. So even though they're exaggerated, they're exaggerated in the way that their character would exaggerate it. They don't all move the same. So that's really nice. And then on top of that, once the story gets going, an actual conflict comes in, that animation makes more sense they do play off of it a lot more they're going into the jungle they're going on this adventure things are trying to kill them and some characters are taking it well some are not taking it well and that's when it's great to see that stuff exaggerated and turned up and then what's really nice is when you get to uh the third act where sort of the emotion has to come back again they do slow it down they do calm down there are times where they'll just stop they'll have a conversation they'll say things that are you know, not mind-blowing or anything, but important to the story and the characters, and they will give them sort of calmer, slower moments, and they do work out. Um, with that said, man, when they... What I really enjoyed about this movie, what really won me over, particularly in the last third, I just kept saying to myself, man, this movie loves loves that it's animated. They take advantage so much of the fact that this is an anime movie, not just an anime movie, a cartoon. They do everything like a cartoon. It's not like a Disney princess movie or something like that. Of course, those, those are great. Nothing wrong with those. Uh, but you see a lot of them. There's something great about the fact that when a character needs to really get around something, they're going to get around something in a really creative, stretchy, goofy way. Uh, you know, you, you see something like Minions and or just Despicable Me, and those movies are fine, but they're all kind of moving this one way. They're all just kind of bopping around, bouncing around, and, you know, you, you kind of get tired of it after a while. These characters are not only moving in their unique way that matches their character, uh, but they're doing it in such a wonderfully stretched out way, and... There's a whole sequence where I think Van Helsing, he, he now lives in the hotel and he has like this whole underground like kind of lab and library and stuff and everything is shaped so that his bizarrely designed body can fit through it and other people can't fit through it as easy and they're laid out so weird and so uniquely that only his body can stretch out to get through it and there's, I mean just one of those would have been funny, but they do something like 10 uh, in the matter of like not even a minute of him just going through this lab and squeezing through these very weirdly shaped holes. And uh, it's very, very funny. 
And when you actually do get to the parts where uh, something's going after them, the comedy is emphasized because uh, the strange reactions, the over-the-top reactions, comes from how they're reacting to something. So it matches really well. So... Yeah, I, I am recommending this movie. I think it's very funny. I, I love what they do with the animation. There, there's a whole, uh, uh, what I was going to bring up before, there's a whole uh, climax to this movie where uh, this monster is bashing open this wall and sunlight is uh, shining in. And it already starts off gray because Mavis has this thing she has to zap the monster with. And little bits of light are shining in. She's trying to dodge it as these lights are almost coming at her like bullets. And then finally, that's entertaining enough, but then there's a scene where, I mean, the whole thing breaks open, but the other characters get in front of her and they cast a shadow, so she has to get to this, you know, this cliff, this giant rock up there, and so all the characters, like, come together in their unique way, in the unique way they're designed, and the shapes and sizes and stuff, and create these shadows, and she has to duck around the shadows, you know, if it's like, sometimes it's the little puppy, she has to get down really low, and, and, and crawl along them, and then if the Frankenstein monster is there, like, and he's running, she has to run the exact way he's running, and that stuff is so creative, and can only really be done in animation. And I feel like these movies, when they're done the best, realize that this can only be done in the world of animation and just have the most fun they can with it and the most creativity and the most laughs that you can. So it got better as it kept going and even the dramatic moments, though not heavily dramatic, but uh, they worked out okay because this is kind of another lie reveal story a little bit, but it doesn't bring the story to a halt when the reveal happens. If What I really like is that the character that finds out uh, the lie it doesn't just go on a tantrum or say everything sucks and stop the story or drag it out or anything like that. It ties into something that is happening to the character and they feed into each other and it emphasizes the drama even more. It, it just amps up uh, the emotion that's going on, that, which again is nothing that deep. I mean, it's Hotel Transylvania, but it still plays out effectively enough that when a character has to give an emotional speech at the end, it's legit emotional and funny. It, it, it's a very cute speech. Y you sense the connection and it works out okay. So yeah, I recommend this movie. I, I do feel bad they didn't release it on the big screen, but, but I kind of get why they did, uh, you know, with, with everything going on in the world still. Uh, there's probably a lot of kids still stuck at home or whatever, so this is a good movie to show your kids. You can... I feel like they'll watch it over and over and over because there's so many scenes that are so well animated and over the top and their reactions are so funny. Uh, if you started... And you're saying, I don't know, man, that this is a little too crazy, a little too exaggerated. Stay with it. It does balance out. There is more of a reason that they move this way eventually. Though it does start off really distracting uh, with those kind of movements. But uh, yes, it, it does get better and better as it goes along. So... I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, what did you guys think? Did you see the other Hotel Transylvania movies? What'd you think of them? And how do you think this one compares to them? I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think anyone that's a fan of the movies will like this too. I don't know if it'll be their favorite or anything, but I think they'll enjoy it okay. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know what you think, and I will see you next time. Take care.